Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request, this time for Rapid Kirby. Uh, thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, uh, commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, he wanted me to talk about the 2003 film, The Core. Now, there's a blurry of this, which I don't have, but this is the DVD. Has a few features from back to the day. A little bit of making of, commentary, etc. Again, from back to the day. And these reviews are probably the only people that enjoy this film. And I'm one of them. Because the core, this is a ridiculous premise. It's not realistic in the slightest. Scientists have completely hated the film because of how unrealistic it is. And I think they said it's the most unrealistic sci-fi film ever made. Uh, which is actually in a way, weird way commendable. But you know what? At the end of the day when I go into a film, I, I just want to have fun. And I thought this film was fun. I thought this film was entertaining. I always thought it was entertaining. Ridiculous. Tis, it's kind of a fun update of those 50s sci-fi B movies with a little bit of the Roland Emmerich type of feel disaster movie. I thought it was energetic. And what helped a lot is the very likable cast. Because you got Aaron Eckhart. People remember him as Two Face in The Dark Knight. I really liked him in this film called Battle Los Angeles, which that was another film that was very hated, but I love that movie. Yeah, Hilary Swank, who I do think is a good actress. She kind of came onto the scene with Boys Don't Cry. She was a million dollar baby with Clint Eastwood. Did a good actress. Delroy Lindo. Very good actor. You got Stanley Tucci, who has a lot of fun in this in his part. His last scene still uh, gives me laughs. DJ Qualls. For about 15 minutes, he was the guy people cast as the DT kid. He was in Road Trip. He was in this film called The New Guy, where he was the star of it. Uh, you also have Alfre Woodard, another good actress. And which she was in Star Trek First Contact, but no, she was not in. Uh, I get confused with the other actress, she who was in Olympus Has Fallen and those movies. That's a different actress, but Alfre Woodard, she was in Star Trek First Contact. She helped out Picard on the ship with the Borg. That's Alfre Woodard. You also have Bruce Greenwood. He was in the new Star Trek films as Pike. You have uh, Richard Jenkins. Which, I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in The Shape of Water. And, like, quite a few movies. If you, It's like, it's that guy. It's, you recognize him as that guy. Chetty Terrio. He was the bad guy in the first Bad Boys movie. He's in this as part of the team. But pretty much a team of six people are gotten together for the job to go into the core of the earth, restart the core of the earth, to it stop spinning, and you find out it's because the government had tested this weapon to use <laughs> earthquakes. Because I guess an enemy was going to use earthquakes to attack them, so we built one first, and... <laughs> That's a, it is so much ridiculous stuff, but it, there's a bit of a ton in cheek quality to it with the way the characters. It's not a parody, but you can tell there's a little bit of a sense of humor to it. Kind of like how I view Volcano in 1997. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's got a good cast, it's not realistic, but it's kind of like if a sci fi channel was a good movie with actually decent. For the time, it's decent special effects. Nowadays, they don't hold up. As well as the fetch today, but for 2003, some of this stuff is actually pretty decent, and others is, you know, funky looking. But they were effects of the time. Those those 2000s, early 2000s, they, they do have dodgy CGI when you go back. And this is stuff I can understand is it'd be hard to do a lot of this practical. But yeah, you think of those movies back to the day at the Earth's core, and again, all those. How many movies in the 50s where they went to Mars? If you watch it today, you go, what the hell? They thought this and this. 
So that's how I view it. Like that type of movie done with 2000 you know, and three special effects. And I, and it was cool to see a different type where they go into the earth because so many times it's going into space or something on the surface of the planet. While there are disasters here, I mean, the Golden Gate Bridge gets burned by sunbeams, Rome Coliseum, these electrical storms completely obliterate it. And like I said, if you watch the effects today, they're, they're not as... Uh, excellent as maybe back then but in a way kind of worse in that up unintentionally in that 50s it's a B movie fun silly stuff but at least the cast like I said you look at Stanley Tucci's character like I was mentioning Volcano that film ends with I love LA we love it I mean that's the end of the movie is that song it's like, it's, it takes it serious, so it's not just a cringeworthy winking every five minutes so it gets old. But at the same time, they're taking it seriously because people's lives are at stake. But at little bits here and there, this sense of humor. I did kind of like Independence Day. Like, if you watch Independence Day, it's ridiculous as well. I mean, a whole alien civilization being destroyed by a computer virus. But if you're enjoying the characters and you're enjoying... And I will say those effects work better because they did more practical model work. And I kind of wish they did a bit more of that in this movie. But the director, John Emil, I mean, he wasn't used to that stuff. He did films like Copycat with Storny Weaver. He did Entrapment with Sean Connery. I mean, the whole plot is this magnetic field and the core has stopped spinning. So it's different fluctuations of the earth is messing things up the electromagnetic field is going down the tubes and you know within months they'll lose all power within a, a year or less the earth will be burned up by the sun and you have this stuff going on like the the beginning where this disaster happens I guess everybody's pacemaker stopped, but I'm sitting there going, how many people have a pacemaker in one city block? Because it's like 50 people, and I'm like, listen, I know a lot of people have pacemakers, but uh, like 50 people in one little block? I don't know if that many people have pacemakers. But then like, maybe there's other stuff as well, but the, the one thing they mentioned is that their pacemaker stopped. I'm like, that many people in that block have pacemakers? Damn. Was like two for one special? But, like I said, if you use your brain, you're going to hate the film. But, I've said before, I want, I just want to have fun. Believe it or not, when I go into a movie, I do just want to have fun and be entertained. Even if you're dumb, if you're fun, I can let a lot of stuff go. I really can. Because, to me, movies, for the most part, are meant to be entertainment. Unless, you know, horror is meant to scare you. Drama is made to make you feel. This stuff is made to ha have a good time. And the cast, I thought, made me have a good time. And, like, what crazy stuff do I happen as? Birds smashing the buildings. Hilary Swank and Bruce Greenwood are astronauts and they're pilots and they have to land the, the shuttle down to the canals of the city. And they're passing over this baseball field. Aaron Eckhart and his banter with Chucky Cario. I think there's some fun stuff to it. I think Aaron Eckhart does a good job as the lead. I think he's a guy that, Sally, the films he picked did not do well. That's why he doesn't get cast much as leads. But like I said, I, love, I really like Battle of Los Angeles. I thought this was a fun movie. But I read up somewhere that the reason Aaron Eckhart did this is because it was a bit after 9-11. And he just wanted to do a movie that had a big paycheck. He got to be the star, and this was it. I'm sure that's why all these people did it. If you ask him today, it's, you know, that. Which is fine. I mean, I would do it. I mean, hell, this has the element of unobtainium before Avatar. So, suck it, Avatar. Does this beat you to it with the unobtainium stuff? 
But I think this is more... Yes, it's dumber than Avatar, but this was more fun. And you know what? It was just a little over two hours, and it went at a better pace. And the cast are having more fun with each other. Like Delroy Lindo, he's testing on building this sh shuttle with his lasers to get down, and the government comes by. Did you build this in three months? <laughs> yeah, if I had $50 billion, you, want, you take a check? <laughs> DJ Qualls is hired to pretty much hack the planet and control information so that the public doesn't get wind of what's going on and mass panics happen. And he's like, I need Xena tapes, Xena Warrior Princess tapes, and Hot Pockets. They help me concentrate. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like it, It's serious, but at the same time, there's a sense of fun. I, it kind of like a Roland Emmerich Independence Day type of feeling to it. Or even when they get the people together, Hillary Swank and Bruce Greenwood to fly the thing, Chetty Terrio and Aaron Eckhart to look at the science of it, Delroy Lindo because he built the ship, Stanley Tucci, he knows a little bit about this field as well. Like they're testing it out and things are going haywire. And during this test, Chetty Terrio is just laughing his ass off going, <laughs> it's a disaster. Also, I find it funny that, you know, I understand scientists complain about this, but I just find it funny that this film is so bad that it's silly in a lot of people's eyes, yet they're the same people that are okay with Godzilla vs. Khan, which literally has a hollow earth. It literally has a hollow earth. The earth is hollow, and Team Khan and his ancestors live there. And there's literally a scene where there's portals that go to the hollow earth. And Godzilla is breathing fire down to the middle of the earth. And God and King Kong climbs up and teleports to the surface of the earth. And people are okay with that. And they don't say a single thing. <laughs> but this is so awful. But, you know, with that stuff they let it go. I guess because it has a giant monkey giant ape I should say in it <laughs> okay and like I said I like the way the characters interacted with each other the the love hate relationship between Delroy Lindo and Stanley Tucci where De uh, Tucci's doing this narration and Delroy's like you doing that Carl Sagan narration do you read my book yeah I read your book it wasn't good <laughs> Does they have a past with each other? Let's say Hillary Swank was a good, strong, leading lady, but they don't throw politics in your face. Aaron Eckhart and Hillary Swank, they don't try to force a love story in there. There's not moments where they kiss or they decide to have sex. They don't do that. It's just a camaraderie between the two. When they go into Earth, it's just fun to see what happens next. There's underground, or say, underwater earthquakes. Uh, lightning strikes roam. You get some decent model work, but you get some very S CGI. Uh, there's lightning superstorms. When they're going down, at times there's empty space. At times there's valleys of crystals, like a crystal Grand Canyon. Uh, at times, there's like diamonds, and someone goes, man, I want one of those. <laughs> why do you get dibs on being the hero? It's my damn ship, that's why. <laughs> See, that's why I liked it. I liked the characters, and then when some of them died, I felt bad. And that's kind of the kernel why I enjoy the film, is that I actually like this group of characters. I like the way they interacted with each other. I thought there was some nice humor and, and camaraderie where I felt bad when they had to tick it. Because you know some of them are going to tick it. It's a disaster movie. And when it happened, I felt bad. I felt sorry. And 
that's kind of what you're supposed to hopefully happen in these kind of movies is you feel bad with what happens to the characters and with the I said it's not every day you see a big budget film where people have to go into the core of the earth no matter what you did it would be ridiculous and silly so if you don't go so far off court okay like I said if a sci-fi channel film had the budget and the cast and a sense of humor like this had I would like more sci-fi channel movies I mean Sharknado is so much more awful and people praise that more so you can keep your Sharknado I'll keep films like the core and this is the end of spoilers so spoilers it's kind of, there's a scene where Stanley Tucci, they have to separate these compartments and they have to do this thing where they have to elicit the series of bombs in a certain order to start the core going, like an engine, I guess. And Stanley Tucci, he got trapped in there and he's recording himself and he stops what he's doing and he's like, what the fuck am I doing? Because <laughs> he's about ready to die in a, a minute. And yet he's recording. He's like. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> he throws that he's laughing. Moments like that is what makes me enjoy this film. A sense of humor. A sense of self retrospection. A sense of taking a bit of the piss out of it. and But a sense of uh, the character. Like he's so into this narration thing, and he's like, no one's going to hear this. I'm not going to be alive in a minute. What the fuck am I doing? Stuff like that is what makes me enjoy the film. As entertainment, escapism, and... You know, as someone says here, a total blast. I agree with Sean Edwards of Fox TV. Not edge of your seat, but a blast, sure. Like I say, it's a piece... A fun escapism entertainment. And yes, there's a shitload of things that do not make sense. And people even wrote it down. Earth's atmosphere would not disappear within a year after the core stops rotating. A small EMP device cannot stop the core's rotation. No more than a fan to dissolve a thunderstorm. The magnetic fields would disappear everywhere at equal rates, so there wouldn't be holes without magnetism in certain places. Because later on, there's a hole that they say, and that's what melts the, the Golden Gate Bridge. Which he actually did some good practical explosion and cars falling over the bridge in that scene. There's some good practical stuff in there. Earth's magnetic field dissipating would not cause solar microwave radiation strong enough to melt the Golden Gate Bridge. And if it could, it would melt cars long before it would melt the bridge. Crystals thousand miles below the surface would be impossible as the intense pressure there would, would crush both. Diamonds cannot be there since there is no carbon in the Earth's mantle. People can't walk around a few minutes in a 9,000 degree Fahrenheit environment. They would instantly burn to a crisp. No ship can convert heat into energy to propel itself away from a nuclear blast. There's no way you could communicate with Command Central because the signal would have to penetrate 4,000 miles of rock. I mean, they're all valid stuff. I don't care because I thought it was still a fun time. Entertaining, although a bit dated, special effects. A quick pace that I never got that bored. Has a sense of humor to it. And a very likable cast and an energetic tone makes me enjoy the core. Even though I'm told I'm not supposed to. I think some people made this knowing a bit of what it was. But do you approach it with huh, winking every five minutes and being obnoxious? I'd rather they do it like they did in this. Oh, Volcano, which I like Volcano more than this, and Volcano from 97, I love 
very much. But I rather prefer you do it that way. That's just me. Instead of winking every five minutes and being cringe and pay attention to me. Like Sharknado films do. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you guys later.